Easy one, I improve for us. Mm -hmm. mm. <clears throat> Lord, we. Um, you lads, I want to move here to the base, so give her some room. Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. We do want to quiet our hearts and minds, Lord, before you this mm -hmm. morning. To be willing, Lord, and ready to to receive your wisdom. Mm -hmm. To, Lord, again, come together, Lord, to fellowship with one another mm -hmm. in your ways. Mm -hmm. Do pray, Lord, for the day that you would set us, Lord, um, near to you, Lord, that we would be willing to lay aside all else, Lord, and really hone in on the time today. Uh, do thank you for each heart here, and continue to pray, Lord, for uh, your touch, Lord, your uh, your hand to be upon each life. Mm. Lord, to to raise and to um, bring to different heights and depths, Lord. Mm -hmm. uh, just thank you for our dear brother, Lord, and his mm -hmm. willingness to to uh, lead the class. And mm -hmm. I pray that we would see him, Lord, more than just a teacher, but mm -hmm. as a brother, Lord, who is mm -hmm. showing, Lord, a way of life that you have given mm -hmm. to him. So I do thank you for this time and pray mm. for your blessing. Mm. Amen. Mm. Um, actually, I'm going to put a, the discussion the test on hold of the bit, branch it out to a little bit of the review, also um, some um, what I call a cultural contest with what we're talking about. So we don't deviate it from uh, why we even open a topic like this, spend time like this. So sometimes you narrow down with some text that you often have you've lost the culture, you know. So um, in, in English, I think there's a word called, well, look at the trees, lost the forest or something in nature, you know. Yeah. So yeah, so um, um, oftentimes, I think I feel the tension, the struggle in in the spirit or in my observation rather to see the uh, contrast of uh, two cultures. You know, we normally say that are embedded in human nature in the way how man has been. We know that we are sons of what? Adam, right? We are a creature of the world. As we struggle with to learn God's culture, God's kingdom, we struggle with that. You know, mm -hmm. so how to be a son of God, how to move in kingdom mindset, kingdom economy and grace. Uh, in learning Chinese culture, we introduced um, another shock, if you will, or culture conflict. I don't think it's a conflict, but there's a challenge of a certain upbringing you guys accustomed to is not your fault is not even bad, it's just you look at two things, you see two different approach of things I call it culture building, you know, so oftentimes handed the the need for you guys to withdraw yourself to think about, okay, I'm, a, a, I'm whether I like it or not, I'm a product of my brain. That my brain is more than of young people will con contextualize that family, community, your past. But uh, I think your upbringing is um, a society, right? A culture that you build in. And we recognize a Murray, for example, only have 250 years as a nation, I'm not so sure. So um, before that, American become a people, uh, maybe another hundred years ahead of that. So I'm not so sure. So, so it's a new people, basically. It's uh, the offshoot and uh, derision from, uh, I don't write the word or not, um, from a European culture, am I? The things uh, Europe has been struggling with, good or bad, and eventually become a, a, a overflow to here. People trying to find a, a new life here. Some 
are Christians, most are not. You know, so even Christians, there are different fractions. So my Protestants have been dominating the Christianity front for most of the time. Only last century, in the middle of last century, Catholic come to be considered a norm. You know, so we have President as Catholic, Catholic John F. Kennedy. Even that is hugely opposed by the Christianity today, right? So they don't want a Catholic president, that's for sure. So, you know, so recent years they have a pop, go to Congress, gives a speech, that's unheard of. So that's a huge historical change. My point is that Catholic has considered it not a welcome element in America for the longest time. Even America is a Christian nation. Good or bad, that's not the point I try to make here. The point is that you came from a historical background that thing has totally changed before you came to the world. Even so most of you are born what? In um, in this century, am I sorry? <laughs> Not before last century. So you when we mention Cold War for you it's an alien concept, you know? Much like uh, we were thinking about the Second World War. And Second World War is like we think about the Civil War. So there's a huge gap of a time. I sometimes I don't even think about that. Uh, when it's outsider, I don't grow up in America, I don't understand the impact. There are more and more I begin to associate with guys and to retrace American culture where this generation is, where the coming day is. I recognize the huge gap. The other concept would be you brought up in a um, called a bi uh, unipolar world, unipolar basically American as a, the only superpower in the world. So Cold War is a bipolar, am I? Cold War, Soviet Union is opposing power. Now the days that come, you're gonna into multipolar world, China, Indian, Russian, those culture begin to burge on the same, begin to challenge Western thoughts. Mm -hmm. So not challenging per se, just begin to be more vocal about the cultural traditions. They have a long traditions Longer than you, right? So, yeah, so <laughs> longer than European culture. <laughs> so, does yeah. so, that make sense to you? You think the Roman world that's already your Attic world. Those nations are longer than Roman world. So, I mean, I'm speaking to you, okay? So, Confucius is a, is a, is a good example. So, so you 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 will be able to have a different perspective as we introduce those things. To think about, oh, not all cultural civilizations are built with a 300 years memory. Okay, so you know, like most of the cultures we talk about, biblical culture, Chinese culture, as I shared, is at least 3,000 years to begin with. Make sense to you? So, from Abraham time, for example, most of the time. And that, uh, in the, then Confucius speaking about. Um, you know, many, many, many uh, centuries BC, right? So, you know, so the tradition is long and lasting. With that kind of way formation, your understanding, culture building, there may be something to be gleaned from. So, uh, that is important to cast the vision for the people. For culture is always. A, uh, I want to use a secular or historical mankind, their life, to draw some principle for you to understand how kingdom culture is built. How to read the Bible in a proper way. And there is no, there is a distortion and short shyness, I believe, condition, especially in American Christianity, is centralized on American experiences. So the, the reward and even the, the, the contempt show the traditions in the West, which is the main state has been European nations, right? As a Christian, Judeo, Christian entity tradition. We, we literally think those are not a tradition that we embraced. So 
My point is that you you have to done away with that gradually. How that being gradually done is a through certain kind of input, like we have here, and then read the Bible. Then you gonna brush it out and just think about a big picture of what God doing through human history, what God doing among His people to look at it in your generation. If you are to become a, a sense of new people. You're going to build your own life, hopefully the ones with you, whether in your family, you know, the near family setting, you being a mother, fathers, yeah. uh, or the way you're going to decide one, teach a new way of life, how you start with. Um, you have to have some uh, grasp how cultural building actually works and put into practice. Okay, it's not just uh, knowing something, learning something, familiar with something. Certain things required practical, practical wisdom. You get to put into practice. That's today I wanted to highlight that. The discussion we had is hopefully more than give you a framework for understanding, but really for you to understand, you might be still walking your default in many ways. That's not your fault. The default is not your fault. But your parents, the community, the society you have is, they are flowing into a certain river. Use the little boat in it. Unless you understand, don't be cared about that river, you will work hard for you to find your land and plant your garden. You'll be carried. So those are work hard for young mind to grasp. I don't but when you become uh, of age, you can think about have a family, you can think about raising other children. Uh, Andy and Noah, I think, are more matured, advanced in years in, in, in learning human experiences, learning God's way in life. They might need have more, my word right now, care more weight to them, you know, so for Andy especially. So, yeah, so because. The contrast is there, am right? I? So it's becoming practical. We're much practical. It's not topical. It's not just understanding. It's the way how you do life. So I hope we'll, today's discussion will unplug you from your default a little bit to look at the benefit uh, with it, the purpose, the intent I had in discussing this topic <coughs> with you. I want you to think it deeper, you know, so for a while you have been, uh, thank you for your interest, thank you for your active discussion and your warming, sometimes try to put a certain thing in practice, but I believe those are still, um, just like building anything, you're still not able to see the blueprint, see the real reason why things getting done, you know, so we, we paint a picture. I mean, today you guys are artists, some of you, you paint a picture in because you get a sketch, right? So you see the, then you begin to learn color, shade, whatever. So I'm not sure you guys are artists, you know what the thing. But uh, eventually you will have a, a mastery over some skills or some painters or whatever it is, their way to interpret the world. You begin to borrow them, begin to really zoom in, in that master's point of view, how to look at the world, how to reproduce it in your art. But before you can do that, I hope you don't venture out to invent your own method yet. But eventually you will able to break your master, this, this, this way of mimicking them, able to say, you know what, that way interpreting the visual images is still limited. I wanted to interpret and express my art, what I observed in my own unique way. Now in modern days, that's called a creativity. I don't encourage you to do, always do that. But I'm saying that you observe things, begin to observe different things. Like in painting, you observe shapes, curves, color. I don't know painting very well, so you can understand. But eventually you recognize, oh, it's a different shade of colors. It's not the shape merely decided what I'm painting at. Mm -hmm. And you then recognize it's not merely 
the every detail, in every layer, the color actually matters. Is the way my observation point, my impression, my visual impression of the object that share with us as a mentor. You begin to understand things differently. So I'm not an artist, you know, I appreciate a lot of art appreciation a little bit, but uh, I'm just give you a brief way to look at it, tell you in the similar way you might not look at a culture building, look at a human kind they're they themselves being a people being a people the certainty has first to be a people they have a different construct it's like you're looking at them like a visual object right so they are different constructs but how to interpret that construct how to reproduce it whether you like it or not you're going to follow the skill sets and pass on to you to reproduce it but for you to inventively to relay a new way to interpret the world that's required a huge discipline it's not casual uh, i heard a certain young mind is still condition not for you guys again think of the casual i more and more grew up and uh, maturing the lord recognize the actually unchangeable principles their pattern you the we that you only can conform to you can challenge you can all right you can reinvent your will called okay so the song come up you then decide your season you don't tell the song said i want the six seasons okay so here <laughs> the move according <laughs> so, i mean talking about you know so then you found that the four seasons is not one people how many people do four seasons all over the world People don't divide the seasons by their own design. I mean, is that making sense here? So why? So why 12 as a number is universally embraced? Yeah, universally embraced. Why day and night is universally designed as we whole man work the rest? You know, you would think, I decide that. No, the sun and the moon design for you with the earth movement. Does that make sense to you? You subject to those things. You design system based on those things. Your calendar, your timetable, your observation and science even accordingly. You don't decide it. You know, so even today, you can reach Mars. You can look at the outer space. You can go to the deep of the ocean. You can study human brain. You can know many things, but still you're not going to challenge a calendar. Why? And so you still use a glory calendar, am I for most likely? So why? Because those things don't change. So they were uh, observation and a calculate based on things that are already functioning. I mean, doing things. You can only improve on it. So it's a cultural building. There are many things when you're young, uh, the American culture especially, the, the, the culture you brought up is, I can invent everything. I can, and last time Benji is very wisely, so I were thoughtful, you need to apply thought to the thing taught. He said, no, there are things I had to learn to yield to. You know, so in that light, yield to the sun, the moon, that design, not try to invent the will. It's not really yielding, right? It, nobody tell you to do it. But if you don't do it, it will be down south no harm, down earth no harm. <laughs> it's going to do harm to you. So then yeah, nobody come to the seventh floor and said, I was just going to make a leap, you know? <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm going to be Superman. <laughs> so, and uh, why? So you learn those things, I'm just talking, all right? So you don't talk about that a year to somebody, all right? I'm just trying to, to tell you something, okay? You don't obey something, all right? The word is the same as this word, like subjectively, or subject, something you decide what to do. Actually, not really, because if you don't conform to it, you don't yield to it, there's a huge consequences. 
I mean, whether you jump on the floor, I hope you have your legs still together. <laughs> so, I mean, <laughs> so, I mean <laughs> sorry. <laughs> oh, you try to say, hey, I'm going to plan my, you know, my, my day in the night. I hope company is your hard. <laughs> you know, so, <laughs> I'm going to sleep during the day, you know, and go to work in the, in the evening. I mean, I don't think anybody can hire you unless you have some kind of nine guard, you know, so, <laughs> is that make sense to you? So people don't surround you, basically, your preference to design their life accordingly. But however, we come to a society, last time in Hindi, called postmodernism, or rather self-determination. Those are all treated as a virtue. This morning, I talking to Elijah a little bit, a concept of freedom. I use the word, use a parable about freedom. You know, there's many ways to think about what freedom is. I think today's idea of freedom in modern young mind, or educated mind, all over the world through the American influence, is freedom means I don't need to be bothered by something anymore. I'm free from its restraint, I'm free from its influence, I'm free from quote unquote its dictations. So the freedom of water or with water is a I like a desert man, right? So <laughs> I don't need to see a job way anymore. The from free water. So yeah, you will die. So you know so Oh, there are another way to interpret freedom, which is today I want to reverse for you guys, together with you guys, to look at all this. There's a mini concept your brother default with is a false. Let me, let me emphasize that. A false, a destructive, a ungodly, a not objective, a not real. It's a false construct. So, your freedom, for example, the construct. Freedom is not freedom from water. Freedom of water is a freedom in water, with water. Amen? So, does that make sense to you? So, um, you are free in this world as a son of God, for example. It's not like that you are a monk, a desert father, get rid of the world. You have to be planning the world, with the world, and then free as a, as a song. You know, is that making sense to you guys? Yeah, so the birds are free of uh, water, ocean. is is not that means he's going to get rid of the ocean. Amen? Hallelujah. He's going to live in on the land. Bird is, uh, is about to fly over the ocean, you know, so wild creatures in the sea, in the ocean, still lives. That's on the uh, oceanic life. So, my water picture. So it's not a desert, free of rain. What does the freedom with the water then look like? <coughs> I use a picture and said, you can swim, right? If you get in the water, you don't get drowned, you swim, right? So, now imagine a person like me cannot swim, what are they going to do with the... <laughs> When in the river, the rabbit, I'm gonna die. I'm not free of water, but you have some freedom for water. What if you can ride the raft? I mean, so that means you don't have to swim, you just go to the rafter, you can still not harm by the river. Am I so? What if you have a boat? Now, then I say other pictures like what if you can use water to generate electricity? And that's uh, use the water to do farming. So um, you can make a voyage across Atlantic, right? So, so the freedom of water, freedom with water, is a huge concept. So there's the idea relation between you and water become a so different construct. I might bore you guys or maybe interest you guys. Depends on how you listen to these things, okay? So you don't want to be philosophical, but you will have to. If you're going to learn things of God, you're going to have to understand yourself 
understand the world, understand how God wants to use you or posit you in the world. Those are basic questions, not philosophical. They are fundamental questions whether you are a man of thought, understand the wisdom or not. So you can live like an ant, never think about those things. But you can't live as a son of God without thinking about these things. Okay, so God wants you to understand these things. So back to the concept we try to talk about is uh, this concept. It match to the topic. Introduction is done. Is what we are learning through this discussion. I might uh, encourage you guys. I don't have a lot of time, only an hour, so I can't really lengthy conversation. I want you to bring this to your own quiet time to reflect on things I shared. Today's conversation, maybe you want to listen to it, I'll post it over soon, and listen to what I tried to get at, okay? I want to understand three things. One is what it means to have an order in life, okay? What it means to have an order in life, or purpose in life, they're the same thing, you know? If you have to gonna have all the purpose in life, can you quit that together? Okay, so what how you to to detect it, how to how to know about it, how to learn other, how to learn of it. Third, how to establish it. Okay, so I contrast the two culture I think I handed it before. From there I want to talk about this is two contracts. In Western culture, is often, especially in Anglican American culture, Anglo American, basically a common law tradition. Okay, it's a through order is informed by legal concept. Much like most of the time, order or righteousness is informed by legal framework. And uh, that is a greed blinder, Paul called stumbling block on a wheel over human mind. What it means to attain unto righteousness or order. Okay, so it's often combined with fear of punishment. Okay, so fear based. The other one is inspiration based or ideal based. That is, order is a culture of honor. To build proper honor, respect for some things. Because I highly want to be the one being honored, being respected. Therefore, I will do the thing that enable me to be the person, be honored or glorified. Same word in the Bible, okay? So, so in the Bible, Paul in the book Roman talking about sin consciousness versus sun consciousness. Elijah handed it today. So it's really identity. So you know, if you're a son, yeah, you will do things you know, as a natural man, whatever, wrong. But your son, you're not necessarily said, I want to get out something that will, you know, m- punish me basically you know I, I do good enough so you if your son you were saying okay those things hold me back hinder me to be the one i need to be to be the one being honored or pleasing to god so a different story you know so have you see the english notion called the look at the cup half full what do you call someone who said that cup is a half full Half empty, sorry, <laughs> that's the other one said, am I? So it seems the same thing, but they give a different mindset, different observation. And then look at okay, the observation seems so simple. We are talking the same thing. Yeah, that's the same. But it's not the same in terms of who articulate that interpretation. You know, for. Elijah would be, oh, that's a half 
Empty can smoke in the I, I know how to explain that. <laughs> Is that right? Explain. It's only, it's, it's, so, mm. if the glass is originally empty, yeah. and you fill it up with water, yeah. it's half full. But if there we go. It's, if it's full and you drink it halfway, then it's half empty. There we go. So you decide the relationship, <laughs> right? There we go. So, the cup relationship with you, uh, the water relationship with you, totally changed. Amen. You know, it's the way you interpret the world changed. It's all in the mind, for sure. It says that's a mind trick. No, it's not a trick. It's a power. <laughs> that's a, yeah. So, is that making sense to you? Um, objectively speaking, okay, that's objectively. But your interpretation, who you are, as a man, changes everything. So your relation with God, who God is to you. Change everything. Is he one to punish you when you fall short? Or is he one to forgive you and want you to fulfill your destiny in Christ Jesus? That totally changed, relation changed. Uh, so look at it, me. I'm your teacher. Am I here to teach you Chinese culture really? <laughs> that depends on how you think about it. I think most audience, whether in this class or outside this class, I think I'm interested to teach a certain subject about the Chinese culture. Really? Or try to use it as a tool that I know how to use in my disposal to challenge your default. Mm -hmm. Amen? The way you're brought up, maybe not that solid as you think. Many constructs, many ideas are like freedom, I just told you. <laughs> Who you are. It was a fundamental stuff, okay? You are inheriting a culture. You are brought out with default. Need to be seriously examined, even upset. So I would, in that light, we'll talk about the order, okay? So what is the order? Order is actually, in biblical word, there's order as well, but it's a proper relationships. Okay, relationship being righteous if that word can be used, called righteousness, okay? Right relating to everything. The first relationship you handle is with God. And then you fellow man, then everything else. Amen? Hallelujah. The three settled. And God defined the love. So that love, I challenge your idea as a Christian. So for sure, it is not your definition. It's not Christian theology definition. I would propose that love has really to do with the human experience to begin with. <laughs> that love is divine. That love is initiated by God. You as a recipient reflection something like a, a object reflecting color of, uh, as a light of the sun. But what have you is when man is blinded, the things that fracture reflections are the subject matters itself. So for your romantic love, your filial love, your friendly love, everything you think of love is some kind of idealization and uh, a, a, a consolidation of a human love. That is exactly what God tried to use the crisis to cancel. So when you die to yourself, what's the essence of yourself? Ah, interesting. You die to a certain tenure and desire for love. Now that love is the worst subject. Worst sensitive subject. <laughs> I'm poking the horned nest for certain people. Is that love is a ro 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 what is it called? A Romeo and Julian kind of love? I hope you never equip that to love, okay? It's actually runs pretty much on opposite to one another. Is that making sense to you? So, yeah. so if that love is a sacrificial, it's from God himself, <coughs> the source of love, the ultimate expression and existence of love. So we must learn, we are just learning to conform to that love, learning that we have love. As I shared with you, love is another picture in God. It's like the same, the same cone has different sides, okay? Two sides, the same cone. 
So you can't talk, I know how to love, without knowing how. Does that make sense to you? You know, so, so love is a wisdom. Love is a, is, a, is a relationship, right? So you don't tell why I do a relation without how to do it. So that's it's kind of a context on the broad order. And then order or that relationship is in Western mind is continuing, or rather in human mind, and not Western mind. Medicine is an offshoot, certain mindset called the sinful consciousness, sin consciousness rather, mm-hmm. humankind. Sons Adam has inflicted this wound. So they don't really know how to honor one another. So actually, in essence, even honor self is a self-serving by nature, self-preservation by nature. Does that make sense too? So yeah. So it's a basically a punishment. Okay, so punishment based. So God projected someone is like a hierarchical head, hierarchical superstructure. Okay, so to reward everybody how to conform to his arbitrary or rigidity or some kind of uh, system, some kind of, uh, I don't know what he's talking about, you know, so. But that's not the God. God is a person. God relish, is relational. So in a sense, it's not a hierarchical or structurally build this up. It's relational, okay. It's very hard to explain, I will use a, a everyday example. You have a student in the, in the school, and the school have many students, right? This is a, you have a principal there. The principal love all students. But I think the principal is going to have a very personal relation with some students. If students you don't know, treat the principal merely, he's the head of the school, right? You're going to punish me, I'm not wrong. <laughs> so, <laughs> if uh, you, you hear my point, yeah? if you are a good student, uh, I presume the very few are capable of doing this. Is that going to have some kind of uh, accessibility to the principal? And the principal will tutor him what's all around the school. And suppose you have been a journalist or the one like editing the paper for the school. You know, you had to know what he went, announce what, why you announced some activity, you are on some kind of student board community, you invited to participate in certain events, why you set those up, and you, you even become have a voice in the council, the principal hold on the whole to there's a school doing better, better, and the students doing better, better, right? So you have a voice there. You are not merely a student in math, a student who who is this class. You know? So you're not students. Oh, that's the parents. Oh, yeah. So you become a student like a little friend, a helper for the principal. Now, often taught people, you know, so I think sometime in prior conversations, uh, you know, when you come to a place to work with people, you buy one of the pastors said, how can I help you to succeed? You don't think about, are they going to have a job here? <laughs> I'm just, uh, you know, subject to, to being a student in this class, you know, I must steal my parents a child. I mean, you know, my my mother's a mirror. <laughs> All right. You don't carry your own culture, that's my point. Your own identity into the sphere and the preparation of the principled mind. You don't use your own culture to culture the principle of the school. You rather will say, I want to learn the culture of the school where my principal is a very knowledgeable body and he's in charge of it. He's, uh, he's need help, you know. <laughs> he, 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 I want to help him. So, back forth, I'm going to try to tell you. So, what it means to honor the school principal? Well, very interesting. Oh, my mom has this big party, you know? 
you know, he gone to principal, can you go there to, you know, to, 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 to honor, I uh, will honor you to go to our part, you know, so. We, my parents are going to have a, a fist for you. <laughs> but you're still acting like a child if you're, what? Uh, a son of who? Of your parents. So that's very honorable. That's very kind for you to offer the principal a chance to know your parents and know your life, right? But I don't think the principal will stay with your life. You just are automatically opposing him out by your way of honoring him. It's a side show. <laughs> For your life. I want to share something with you guys. Hope your mind can grasp it. I don't think many Christians grasp how to worship God, know God in this way. So I'm going to share something major for you. If you have a hearing ear, let those have an ear, let them uh, hear. So it's a culture for honor. So, but uh, I think that principal would delight it, elated. <laughs> if he interested, he said, you know, I'm going to look at the papers, so the students want to involve in the report properly, uh, messaging out to the student body, what I want to do with this conference, what I want to do with this ceremony, whatever, you know, so I want really him to, 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 to interview me to share everything I consider important for this. And, and the students have a chance in the journeys to say, you know, uh, in one journey said, wow, that students really get my message out, you know? So really s understand what I try to accomplish here. So I want him to editor the paper. I and mean, suppose he can, okay? <laughs> so you know, so uh, I'll use an extreme example, so, you know, I know more than students don't all like that. So let's use an extreme example. And and now by doing that, naturally build a relationship here, maybe on the community, but say, you know, why not you help me to know all students? More than one we straight, you let my message in those as students. I want you to know, meet the student's situation, what they desire, where they lack what's going on there and even the teacher in the class get get that get me have some feedback and you know? I so does that make sense to you so it's very natural if I'm a principal I can do that so you know so is that make sense to you I want some feedback so why are you feedback oh well, I invited well I more than one feedback I want you to give me some opinions you, you must understand that this Situation, there are some solutions. Would you care to glean from others for solutions as well? While yourself, maybe do have some consolation, be a counsel for me so we can work out some solution. I, 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 I understand the situation there, but I don't exactly know what's going on. You may go there and study the problem and then interview the right people, discuss with them. Give me some options, <laughs> so, and uh, then we we'll discuss about it. You know, so is that making sense to you? Well, people said, "How you in the world you do that?" Well, I did that when I was a student. Okay, so is that making sense to you? So it's not far removed from what you think incapable of doing. So, so whose culture? is being honored here. I'm going to give you a very practical example. Whose culture being honored? The student's own perception, own construct, or the school's culture, where the, prin the principal is a representation of it. He, he represents the school. Now, I bet that student, now his life, going to expand. It expand so far about his personal family life, personal class life, peer relationship, 
he actually got to know eventually hopefully he will do he walk even he learn everything like any other students enjoy family life enjoy classes but he graduated from the school he will know how to run the school almost I mean at least he briefly <laughs> touched how to run the school get my point yeah so now again I try to share something with you you must learn things by looking at the bottle okay looking at it what's really going on here and then pass yourself to see that now in any learning in in this learning capacity this with learning it's a huge in life this way of learning things it itself is wisdom wisdom is power you know so just thinking about there's a three parts in I'm a child my family right it's wonderful nobody says it's not wrong I mean most students walk in life when the students that's wonderful you know so they share the personal life the friend with others but that young person the default is my family they never remove from the family that is a camp <laughs> that's a big camp so his world is a his family culture and the one invested in learning math learning all things get to know all the teacher what to know is good with every test everything going on he equally he will be a best student on the song for the education that was designed to do okay so yeah I'm talking about that. then the other one is a there's a whole experience of life with a culture that is just opened up for him which is school culture because of the school why he learning family why he learning his classes <laughs> but he learned something that wherever he is he's a part of the whole culture so that's the three we have learned but the yin contest is a three cultures and the culture not bad we're all good okay wonderful beautiful thing but talking about being expanded what kind of student you are how you learn things is highlighted by the simple examples I tell you so you learn one thing you can learn three things sometimes the same caliber same calendar same application but maybe not it may be there are three things terms different for sub different for sets of things are for sets of things maybe there are different depths of things so when you look and another example living example is I'm here teaching you things you can look at oh he's just a teacher of a subject he just try to tell us how to think differently well that's how you perceive it oh I can say I mean impart you the power of a learning power of learning and this uh, culture you got to be a student culture I think think is one of the things the most difficult for mankind to grasp because it always default the culture as a, a good one they tell them able to say I need to repent from my culture in order to enter the kingdom of God in this light repentance here is less to do with your sin not not because you are 40 that's <laughs> because you don't have the eyes the air to see something therefore you need to repent in the sense I need to open my eyes open my ears you know, <laughs> I need to properly think differently so the second so the first one the question is what what is the order 
So I introduce you. Order is a proper culture. Or are we doing relationship in righteousness? Right relating, basically. So I said, how to attain unto the soul? I mean, what does order mean for me? You know? And they said, a contrast city, that the Western way of thinking, especially common law tradition, or man tradition in general, which is reflected by this common law tradition, the like Moses law tradition to the Pharisee time, is the same consciousness. Tradition that continues slaves you and wield you from a proper identity and proper relation with the, your Heavenly Father as the Son of God. Finally, I say, how to build this order, how to establish this order. Remote the recipient, you need to establish it. I indeed, I can highlight right now, is a culture of honor. I mean, culture, not culture for law, but the culture for honor. Now, how to be a student that honor? In the really be a student culture. And that required you first to forego, I know my culture. I'm good with my culture. So student culture is always interested in how culture works, how to practice it. This landed on <coughs> us, not a side notes, but a, something I want you to think about it, okay? You can take your own time to think about it. If you're gonna build a, a honor, a culture for honor, not in man's lip service, not by our own tradition, our own desire, our own mappings and projections. So what, how you learn it? And I suggest to you, as I indeed, or even sometimes highlighted, the Bible and this, this, this kind of discussion may help you to think about it. But one of the things I want to highlight in practical terms when you think about it, is there any culture can be done without vertical relationship? You use the vertical as pair relationship, right? Pair relations horizontal, and I say. And then vertical relationship. Whether you like it or not, you have vertical relationship in life. You know that? <laughs> so, you, your parents is a vertical relationship, right? So you know, me being a teacher sitting and teach you is vertical in a sense. So, but that vertical, just like your pair relationship needs the reconfiguration. So the vertical relationship, are you sure the kind of vertical relationship that establishing you, or you establish for you rather, through society, through family, through community, through your life experiences, are the right one? Is there anything missing? You know, so vertical relations, we first think about the cross, right? So vertical, horizontal, right? right? So, yeah. so do you really think many men understand how to relate to God? Vertical, the first question, right? So second, do you, uh, do you think any man has really studied how to relate to one another? This thing about the challenge I gave you, the notion for love. What do mean to love? Now, similarly, what mean to honor? For example, what does the relationship between love and honor mean? You know, so if you really love somebody, would you honor him? Will you honor somebody? Would you not love him? The sounds seem ah, you know, so. Now, so is you want to know the way of love as wisdom. So if love and honor sometimes equate, you now converge. I think they have more similarity in God's understanding of love. Okay, the fear of the Lord is actually respect, honor God, right? Mm -hmm. So the proper way. So then 
if we say the weave of love is wisdom, is that not the weave for honor one another is also wisdom? Have you learned to honor your parents in the proper way? Have parents learned to teach their children how to honor one another in the proper way? Well, this book tells you in word practical terms how to do it. This teaching, which is not necessarily always highlighted in Christian tradition. The second is a how to be a proper disciple, a proper teacher of the will of God, the will of life. This book also handed for you. This discussion also handed for you. You can't be a passive student for that. You can be a student for subject, or you can be a student of a culture. The culture, a culture required what? Immersion, required practice. Required do something about it. Do something about it. I think that's a huge gap discrepancy of Christianity, Western Christianity, in uh, in the case. Is this disconcerting, discontinuity, and discrepancy about knowing something, but refuse to do it? To do it, you can never say I receive and express love and honor to somebody if he don't feel loved, honored. Means he don't decide by you. The principal will not feel so honored in his said culture if it's only the best guest in your. Parents party, but the principal will be super elated <laughs> if you are a student to discuss matter with him can help him to manage、uh, not manage the school to do things called good for the young people, am right? In the school, even his own children don't care about it. Well, in many. I'm gonna narrow down and sum it up. Many of my life experiences, young people, I want to brag a little bit. I encountered the older generations. My relation with them, whether being managers in the working situation, or in the spiritual work situation, whether in the learning situation, my relation with each one is everybody. Those people that I learn under or work under have treated me like their. Either the best students or their own children. Okay, so I'm not trying to see this to elevate me. I try to tell you there is a way of practice. You must put into practice for that to happen. You know, I did not have a, a wonderful upbringing. I I was a village boy. I did not know a lot. I bounce around most time, ignorant and incapable. But somehow, certain people in different stages of my life took a huge interest in my life. The gods favor with me, obviously. But I think there's an appetite, am I? Can you see that, right? There's something I was able to attune to. And they will inspire those elders or people. Said, I can open up my life for this young man. I can really impart my life to this young man, and I want to work with him. Eh? My professor want to adopt me as a son. My managers cry for me not not go, <laughs> never go. I'm <laughs> talking about. My my spiritual elders、uh, treated me like a son, you know. So、um, I want that for you guys' life. I want that this will, this hindrance, to be taken away from your young mind, young heart. That you're not content, you're not conditioned, bogged down. 
by a certain cultural mode you brought up with. I, 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 I can't express my heart enough. I don't, I don't have motivation speaking. I don't, I don't want to do, make you guys feel bad or good. <laughs> it's not my point. And my point is that you come of age as a young generation. Your time with um, people like me will be, will be short. Amen. Hallelujah. Another five years. <laughs> Hopefully another 15 years. <laughs> but you're going to go somewhere, do something, right? So whether with our, our oversight, our input or not, that's not the point. The point is I want you to carry away with a sense of equipment, sense of um, awareness. There are different ways of doing life. Maybe a little strange and uh, unconventional for you. Actually, it should be the way. It's always the way. You know, it's the way. So with that, we ramp up here. Um, I want each one you take a turn to pray. So, yeah. Andy, why don't you start? Mm -hmm. that this would touch our hearts and that each one of us would look fully at, at what's what has been uh, what has been laid down as foundations and that we would really desire to see your established ways, Lord, in, in how culture works and how relationship works. Pray that we would uh, be willing to Be willing to fully uh, replace our foundations with your foundation and be, be willing to build anew. I pray that our hearts would be really desiring for, for a real relationship. Yes, I think the reason I share this message is I think you guys are ready. You know, half years ago, I cannot share this talk with them, but I, th I think you come to an age, you know, you you want these things, you want these things. So that's I, my confidence in each one of you. So, you know, that's progress, right? So in good time, in the share things, we can't come in the same mode. So my very intentional in different seasons, begin to impart different things to you. So, yeah, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you that we're coming into this season, Lord, and that things are going to be revealed like this. Pray that we would not take it lightly, because we want to really consider what you have, Lord, in a very right way, in a really true way, so that we that our hearts stay um, focused or not focused, so that our, our hearts and minds are sober, very mm. sober about this, mm. and, and we take it seriously, Lord, what we've been mm. given to put it into practice. I just pray for each heart here, Lord, that these things would affect their lives wholly and, and in every relationship and in every circumstance, Lord. And that we would go from here learning this as a life lesson, Lord, that can be really um, transformative in our lives. Mm. We thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Amen.
No, I, can you wrap up for last century? Uh, give time Verse. to others. Mm-hmm. Lord, I pray over each person here and the pursuit of each heart to become, mm-hmm. truly become students of culture. Mm-hmm. Lord, not just to consider ourselves mm-hmm. as such. I want, I want you, Naomi, lay hands on Esther and uh, Noah, lay hands on Kayla. So I want you to be blessed. Thank you, Jesus. While you pray. Thank you, Jesus. Listen, you guys are ready, okay? I don't have other channel to influence you, in a sense, to speak to you. It's the only channel I have so far. But I want you to really meditate on the thing I shared with you. And not to add weight or burden to you, rather add a solution to you, inspiration to you. Amen. Hallelujah. The different way the teachings, okay? My way teaching seems one way straight, and I hope you don't think it's one way straight. Rather, is to discover what grew up in you, what you're ready for, what the poise to flourish in. So, and uh, with this time, I pray you too will begin to take stock in the things shared and meditate on it uh, and uh, have some discussion with others, parents, those, um, whether your siblings or friends, get some solid topic going on, you know, discuss those things. Especially Esther, I want you to open up, discuss things with people. Is that making sense to you? So, yeah, I found someone as your your, your brothers or sister, your parents, begin to dialogue on those things. Those things cannot be be only, you know, facilitated taking your notebook or your heart. It's not subject matter. It just really influences your life. I know you delight in those things and share those things. Then have some serious dialogue on those things. Okay? Is that making sense to you? You know, so it's much like life skill learn painting you talk with people about it you know so and uh, so those things require fellowship require input Go ahead. lord may we uh, recognize the need for an earnestness lord and <laughs> lord even a a sense of uh, desperation and lack, if needed, um, that we might really recognize the value of what is being offered here. But in a sense, this knowledge will always be available to us, or there will always be a time to practice it, but uh, there will not always be the opportunity that we have now to receive it in this way and begin to to practice these things at this time of life look for an opportunity to even be an opportunity there is a time in which it will uh, vanish or it will no longer be there if we do not uh, take it and take advantage of it and so lord i i pray that we would not be led by uh, a fear but rather an urgency to see these things made real and established in our lives Mm -hmm. or to as was advised by our dear brother or to take into account uh, what order even is Mm -hmm. what it looks like to learn it and how to establish it in this life and so Lord, may we focus on the import of the present moment, how we are to go about learning, learning this way, learning how to learn, learning relationships and culture building, but also have a mind and heart for the future, not even just of our own lives, but uh, lives that we have around us and even lives that are yet to come. So Lord, we bless this work and we thank you for your diligence in it. Mm-hmm. And we pray that we also would remain faithful. I pray this in Jesus' name. Mm. Amen. Thank you, Noam. Thank you, guys. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Mm-hmm.